There will, however, be no time limit on the next speaker as I call to make his maiden speech, Mr Stephen Morgan. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, for allowing me to speak uh, on this, my maiden speech in the debate today and to follow the Honourable Member for Totnes. Today's debate on public sector pay is about the sort of people that ensure that this fratten boy had the sort of opportunity and aspiration I want every single young person in Portsmouth to have. Public sector workers and Pompey people are key to delivering this ambition for my constituency, and I should say some more about that later on. Firstly, I am grateful to those who have made it possible for me to make this maiden speech today, the people of Portsmouth South, who put their trust in me at the last election. I promise, as long as I have the privilege of serving in this place, I will be an active local campaigner and a strong national voice for Portsmouth across every single community. I would like to thank my family and friends for also putting me here in this place and the good employers of Basingstoke Voluntary Action for allowing me some holiday to fight the election. (laughs) I would like to thank my family and friends and also pay tribute to my immediate predecessor, Flick Drummond. While only in this place for two years, she served this place well and was an advocate for women's and transgender rights. I wish her well as the new Deputy Police and Crime Commissioner for Hampshire, a task sadly made harder by cuts to police in Portsmouth. In my lifetime, this constituency has cycled through representatives from the SDP, Liberal Democrats, Tories, and now Labour. I hope, Madam Deputy Speaker, it has now settled on a choice it can stick with. (laughs) (laughs) My first job in Portsmouth was a play worker, serving the most deprived parts of the city, a city where, even today, too many families are still living in poverty, a city where too many are still being held back. And coming from a working-class family, a background in public services, my father, a former youth worker, my mother, a hospital cleaner, I've learnt the value of good public services, of meeting local needs and working hard to help others. Proud to be Portsmouth through and through, (laughs) It's my great city I now want to talk about. The home of Dickens, Kipling, Conan Doyle, Brunel and Amanda Holden. (laughs) Portsmouth Portsmouth is a city of many firsts. The first to host a football league game under floodlights. The home of the first person to use an umbrella. The first to open free clinics for treatment of venereal disease. (laughs) The first cooperative set up by dockyard workers. And it is an honour, Madam Deputy Speaker, to be the first ever Labour MP for this historic constituency. A city that throughout its history has punched above its weight. It is the home of the Royal Navy, our nation's new carriers, the birthplace of British authors, world-leading engineers, the greatest football club in the land, in my opinion, and the occasional Labour Prime Minister, but one step at a time. The constituency made up of communities united by a sense of pride in Portsmouth. It is the home of world-class businesses built on a tradition of creativity and innovation that drove Britain's industrial revolution. Portsmouth's success gave Britain a competitive advantage that has persisted into the modern era. We are a city of doers and a city of makers. Indeed, I would go as far to say that the success of the UK has been intrinsically linked to the success of my great city. The spirit of this innovation is driving success in Portsmouth's modern economy. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, through my conversations with business leaders, I know that there is potential to build an economy that creates well-paid jobs for the many, not just the few. Portsmouth continues to leave an imprint on our world. We welcome hundreds of thousands of visitors each year to take with them an understanding of British naval history and affection for a modern British city that has an unrivalled waterfront and world-class events. And maybe, Madam Deputy Speaker, It is our military reserve that means the people of Portsmouth don't shout about their own success, they just get on with the job. And it's this spirit that has fortified the city in the most testing of times. 
During wars and emergencies, my city has gone and done the job. In the two world wars, it's played a key role in delivering victory and winning peace we all enjoy today. My own family, like millions of other families across our nation, played a role in the Second World War, fighting against tyranny. My grandfather, leaving South Sea Seafront on his 17th birthday to liberate man mainland Europe on D-Day. I'm hugely proud of the strength and courage shown by all communities across Portsmouth during Europe's darkest hour. And the city has a spirit and determination that is second to none. And that is why I love it. <laughs> the sadness for me, though, is that far too many people in Portsmouth are continuing to fight their own battles. Whether it is a daily battle to earn enough money to make ends meet, or the battle to find a good school for your child, or the battle for a property you can call your home. These are the challenges, plus so many more, that people up and down this land face every day. I want Portsmouth and our nation to tackle these individual challenges head on. I want our society and our economy to be vibrant and diverse so that we can tackle these individual battles that ordinary people are facing and make it our collective responsibility to resolve them together. I want to help create a future that is better than the present, where hope replaces division and everyone, and I mean everyone, is better off. We know from our history there is no challenge we cannot face by working together. So this is my call to every member in this House. Unite to tackle the everyday challenges of the many, and by doing this, I know that Portsmouth and Britain's best is yet to come. But most disturbingly for me, though, Madam Deputy Speaker, is a generation that literally fought for our country and are now facing new battles. With adult social care and our NHS in crisis, the elderly are uncertain in their old age. This isn't the world that we promised them. We promised them homes fit for heroes, and we are letting them down. And we're not providing them with the level of public services that they deserve, Madam Speaker. Due to the current funding and staffing crisis, where years of pay freezes have created challenges for recruitment and retention. I want the people who keep our communities safe, who educate children, who defend our great nation, who save lives, to be shown that people in this place understand, value and respect them. That's why I was proud to stand with Portsmouth's nurses last week in the Lobby of Parliament and why I'm particularly pleased to be making my maiden speech in today's debate. My own sister will be relying on the care of these nurses at my local hospital, QA, in the next few days. She'll be giving birth to her first child. Sadly, she cannot be here today, but I'm personally <laughs> delighted in fear she may give birth in this place. <laughs> Not another first I would want to be seeing. <laughs> Madam Deputy Speaker, as I said at the start of my speech, it was those public sector workers who gave me hope, who taught me never accept it when they said to a Pompey boy, you can't do that. What motivates me now is one simple notion, to ensure the opportunities of a good education, a good home or a job aren't limited to the privileged few, but could be enjoyed by all our citizens, regardless of where they are born. <laughs> and Madam Deputy Speaker, for as long as I continue to enjoy the privilege of representing the people of Portsmouth South, I will fight for a future in which power, wealth and opportunity are in the hands of the many, not just the privileged few. Yeah. Yeah. Because every day when I, a fratten land lad, arrive in this grand place, I will never forget who sent me here. I will be a local campaigner and a strong national voice committed to serving their interests. So to all those young people in Portsmouth growing up right now, as I once did, my message to you today is this. Aim high, work hard, and you will achieve. Never, ever accept anyone telling you you can't achieve. <laughs> Madam Deputy Speaker, as my fellow Fratton Park attendees say, play up Pompey. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Salou. Uh, thank you very yeah. much, Madam Deputy Speaker.